everyone, I am Mike of Mike and Death's Play, and welcome back to the Pokemon Yellow Immortal Pikachu Nuzlocke. Last time we got through the Viridian Forest, but didn't finish the training that we need to do for Brock. So we're jumping right back into that because, you know, we've got Rage Face up front. He's ready to deal some damage and get to level 11, and that's all we need. So, <laughs> we're already real close, honestly. Um, yes. So, I need to rant about something because, you know, we are doing some grinding and there might be a second little mini grinding in the in the middle here, uh, depending on how much experience is gained from Box Little Junior Trainers. Um, Junior Trainer, not Trainers. There's only one of him. Um, so let's see, what should I rant about? I, I believe the ones I set up were why Mega Evolution should come back as a concept like forever and why uh why the forced experience all is just the worst and um yeah i can go with one of those topics i think i'll do the first one i think i'll think i'll save the angry one for you know after something bad happens and we might need to replace a team member because that's gonna happen in this run uh the run kind of depends on it um not that i'm going to intentionally lose any pokemon because because I'm, I'm, I'm not a monster. Uh, but, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna... I mean, I'm already acknowledging Immortal P in this episode is almost certainly going to die against Brock, and therefore Burb or Rageface will be taking his place, as Rageface hopefully is 202 away. Can I get, like, a, a Metapod or a, a little Pidgey or something? Just for, for some sort of quicker version than level 3 Caterpies, giving me a tenth of what I need. Well, more than a tenth. But, like, barely more than a tenth. <laughs> Still need 180 experience. That's fine. Um, so yeah, so save the Rage Rage one for later. This is just a nice, chill... Mega Evolution is... Actually, it's only the second best gimmick they've ever come up with in the series. Okay, so first, gimmicks, truthfully, have been around forever. Uh, Gen 1 didn't have them because it was the first generation, so the Gen 1 gimmick is glitches because the game was a jumbled mess of coding and, you know, packing as much onto a Game Boy Color cartridge as they possibly could. Um, there was, there was, there was a lot that went into Gen 1, and that is why it is so beloved, because it's just a mess. You know, I've already said, the critical hit mechanics are broken. Gen 2's gimmick, so to speak, was the day-night cycle and day-of-the-week cycle. And the day-night cycle, obviously... Oh, good! A Metapod! Finally! Something I can... Still barely gain any experience from. But you know what? I'm switching Low Kick up to its top spot, because it needs to be here. Um... That did a lot, even resisted. Um... So, you know, Gen 2's mechanic broke the games eventually, and that's why every other game has had a battery that is not tied to a day-night cycle, you know, time keeping time, and how the Gen 3 games often now started with, well, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald at least, started with, oh, yes, um, timer, no worky, but game can still play and save. I worded that as per poorly as I possibly could, on purpose, because it was real busted. But yeah, that was kind of the gimmick of Gen 2. The gimmick of Gen 3... Eh, I guess contests? Yeah, contests was the gimmick of Gen 3. Gen 4... Hmm. I guessed... I guess, uh... East-West things? Um, it's the only one I can kind of think of, and it only impacted one Pokemon. But the real gimmick gimmicks started in Gen 5 with the gems. Not that anybody... people don't tend to include those for some reason. I don't get it, because they were kind of unique to Gen 5. They were specific to the um, kind of shaking grass elements that is unique to Gen 5. And, you know... They, they they were gimmicks that could only be used once. As Rage Free sits level 11. Excellent. This particular grind is now over, although there will almost certainly be another one in, like, five minutes. Um, but yeah, so the gimmicks have been kind of around forever, if you really take a look at things. Um, 
But the gems were definitely the first, like, in battle. This is specific to this generation. Also love the colors of Pewter City. Oh yeah. Um, more specific to this generation kind of gimmick. Uh, not this generation, to that generation, because it's Gen 5. But you know what? We will continue this little rant as we go back to likely grind Immortal P and Rage Face up to level 12. Um, because, you know, we've got to talk to the follower party. That was probably real bad. But we get to see the Pikachu. Fell asleep! And you know, if you're not showing off the cute things that Pikachu can do, are you even playing yellow version? I do like that you can kind of like walk around. <laughs> And then, uh, let's see. Don't need anything from the Mart just yet. Let's, let's have an escort to Brock. Let's just, let's just try to leave town because Brock is terrifying in this game. And, um, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. Yeah, we've got the right stuff to take on Brock as he walks through the fence that is uncrossable to us. Uh, we are going to pick up the hidden item up here because someday I will remember where this item is. But I know that it exists. Does it exist in yellow version? Does it not exist in yellow version? I don't think it exists in yellow version. Well, that's vaguely disappointing. But oh well, there's nothing in the museum, there's nothing else here, there's just... Pewter City Pokemon Gym Leader Brock. The Rock Solid Pokemon Trainer! Brock is scary! Well, I mean, not really, but hiya, I can have the light. I'm not reading everything. He just... I just like this guy. He's our gym guide. But yeah, Pikachu is useless against ground types. That's not even particularly the problem, because this guy has ground types. And yeah, we're not light years from facing Brock, because that's distance and like really, really far, because light travels real fast. But as you can see, here's a ground type. Immortal P is going to take it on with his brand new quick attack earned last episode. And yeah, he's going to probably two hit it. Because, you know, Wick Attack. So the ground isn't necessarily the issue here. It's more... Let's see. Hold on. Mortal P... You need 229. Rage Face needs... A lot. So Rage Face, I'm going to swap you in on this Sandro. <laughs> Sandro isn't really a danger, but... um. I just want to want to shorten the grind as best I can here. And by shorten, I mean have Immortal P safe to switch in in case we ever do run into the terrifying Pidgeotto. Well, that was a useful flinch. But yeah, I'm actually not worried about Brock beating the team. It's just how the heck is Immortal P going to take on one of his two Pokemon? I did finally decide which of the two it will be, and you will find out as soon as we get to him. It's, it's gonna happen, like, you know, a couple minutes from now, as soon as Rage Face earns another 200 and something experience, 303 experience, and Moro P gains 141. That, that one's not bad. Um, <laughs> like I said, I wanted to make sure that we had well, I wanted to make sure that we had the experience room, because just in case, like, something weird happened and one of them had to take on both, I didn't want to get, like, a Like, if I grinded up to level 12 and then suddenly, you know, Rage Face has to take on both, and then suddenly he's level 13, and then Brock just kills me. So, uh, you know, that was what I was avoiding, basically. <laughs> um, so we were only, like, what? almost 10 minutes into this episode. Five more minutes of grinding, and then we take on Brock, and that'll be... that'll be a good episode. Um, 
<laughs> so, you know, skip ahead to the end of Grind if you don't want to continue hearing my ranting. Um, but I think you should hear my ranting because, yeah, I'm still talking about Mega Evolution. All right, so... Really, Rage Face? I let you fight a Rattata just so you can have a nice, clean, easy KO and you miss low kick? Ah, ah, some people. No appreciation. Um, anyway, Gen 5 introduced in-game gimmicks because of the gems. And the gems were kind of, like, weird. Not many people ended up using them because they were one-time consumable. Oh! Yikes! That's why I was afraid! That's why Rage Face is second or first, because now I can switch to a Moral P, because I don't even know that Rage Face could win that. Come to think of it, I'm not sure that a Moral P can win this. Alright, critical hit did 14. You outspeed with Thundershock, dealing almost the entire thing. So. Should be fine, but let's quick attack just in case. And that's why I was scared of this Pidgeotto! It's not even worth all that much experience, but we're gonna have to immediately go heal in case another one shows up. <laughs> nice to prove that yes, there are level 9 Pidgeotto evolved Pokémon in there. Um, honestly, options for Brock if you're playing Yellow version? Nanky makes them easy. Either the Nidorans learns Double Kick at level 12. Uh, Butterfree gets Confusion right upon evolving. Weedle, not available in the other version. Um, and, uh, and if all else fails, that Pidgeotto comes at level 9, has Sand Attack, that's kind of your backup option. Um, so yeah, plenty of actual options. Brock himself is not, I mean, he's not as easy as he is in any other game. Um, but, you know, if you're not crazily taking him on with an actual Pikachu, uh, you'll be fine. Um, back to the gimmicks. So, in Gen 6, they introduced Mega Evolution, which is by far the best in -ga battle gimmick they've ever had. Uh, it was fantastic, everyone loved it, they introduced new Mega Evolutions halfway through the Gen with Auras coming out. Um, it was just really, really, really well done. Um, not every Pokémon had access to it, but the ones that did were mostly beloved Pokémon, and with a few, like, really weird picks that made them much better, um, made a lot of lesser Pokémon a lot better, which was really awesome. Um, you know, Mega Mawile is the, is the first example that springs into my mind, is like, yes, that took a Pokémon who had never been any good and made him amazing. Um, uh, you know, it was great. And then they decided not to continue it. Now, the decision not to continue it and restrict it to specific regions based on the lore of those games makes sense, and I actually don't disagree with that decision. It makes it a little more special, especially because in Gen 7, you could still access it in the post-game. It made it sort of like a post-game treat. And my thought was, okay, they're just testing things out. They're going to see if this new gimmick is just as successful as Mega Evolution was, and then they can come up with some sort of story reason why there's Mega Evolution everywhere for, you know, XYZ related reasons. Maybe a Z version could have done that. Maybe Legend ZA is planning on doing that. Please, yes, make that the case. Anywho, um, anywho, Gen 7 introduced Z moves, which were basically like, what if the gems, but forever? Um, and I liked it. It's good. It, may, it was available to every single Pokémon. Didn't centralize battles or, or, you know, the entire game or anything like that. It was just, it was cool. And you could access it real early and in every battle, and it made every battle a little bit of fun. Um, let Pokémon use some crazy strong moves. I liked it. Uh, not as much as I liked Mega Evolution, but it was still a positive thing, and then when Pokémon started getting unique ones, I was like, yes, and then the Snorlax Z move is the single greatest move in Pokémon history because Snorlax wakes up and tries to flatten things, and it's called Pulverizing Pancake, and it's amazing. But they kept Mega Evolution, which was the real key to, uh, you know, to why it was successful, because you still had access to the really cool one, you just had to wait until the post-game, and it made the post-game a little more fun. Um, and, you know, there were Mega Evolutions used in Ultra, and it was it was a really good 
really good idea as Rage Fist is level 12. Excellent. Um, it was just a really good idea in general. But then they took it away. I don't understand this decision because it was wildly popular. It breathed new life into the series in uh, games which were otherwise not all that well received. Um, they're sort of getting like a, a renaissance now um, that people are liking X and Y partially because ZA is coming out. Um, but uh, they were not well received at the time. I was, I was there. I was part of it. I was the one of the ones going, "Wow, this was so exciting!" And the game itself just wasn't as. G I mean, it's not a miss. I'm, I'm fully. I have never thought any of the mainline Pokemon games have actually been misses. Um, there's just some that are not as good as the others. You know, can't always have one of the top ones. Um, and no, I'm not going to list them out now because I'll wait until I get to one of my absolute favorite games. So I'll time to do that, uh, which is a main-ish release um, in one of the plan games I plan on doing uh, in this run of Mike Only Plays um, as Immortal P hits level 12. But anyway, getting rid of Mega and then having Dynamax, which was restricted to certain battles and completely overtook the importance of those battles, where your Pokémon couldn't even really use their own moves? Like, what? And why? And ugh. Terra-typing in Gen 9 I actually do like. Um, it's probably my second favorite after Mega Evolutions. Um, D Dynamax is my least favorite, kind of, kind of by far. Um, but, you know, bring back Megas, just, or make it, I'm fine with it being post-game only. Make Megas post-game only. I'm fine with that. Just, just bring it back. Like, in all the games. You don't have to bring it back every gimmick. Oh, by the way, best gimmick overall, regional forms. Not even close. Blows Mega Evolution out of the water for me. But enough of that rant. We've got us a challenge. Immortal P, remember, okay, specifically because this is a big one. Immortal P for this run must take on one Pokemon of a boss, of every single boss. Brock is obviously a boss. And in the first two rival battles, he took on the rival's Eevee and then the rival Spiro. It wasn't even worth mentioning because he would have done that anyway. But for Brock, very specifically, he has to take on either Geodude or Onix from full health with him in full health, which means I am allowed to switch to switch mode instead of set mode, but only for Pikachu. Only Immortal P can switch in safely uh, after a KO. No one else can. He has to switch out the regular way. Those are the rules. He has to have a duel, basically. And of course, if he goes down, random selection will determine who takes his place. Um, so for this one, he's taking on the Geodude because the Onyx has bind, and that scares me. <laughs> All right, Brock. Here we go. So I don't need switch mode, because, um... Judo is up front. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Hi, Brock, with an anime-ish design. This is anime design. It's just the limitations of Game Boy Color Jersey's. All right, Immortal P, here's the strategy. Growl it until you can't anymore. Hope it misses tackles along the way, and then quick attack a lot. So the second one with less attack did just one less damage than the first one. And remember, no healing items, so, um, can't miss would just be very helpful at this point in time. Uh, <laughs> okay. That I believe is minus six. Yep, minus six, and he's still doing two damage per. So Immortal P, you have seven quick attacks. So Immortal P, if you could get like six straight critical hits, that would be helpful. It is not looking likely that Immortal P will lift this, because he's got four hits left and has not landed a single critical yet. Nor has Tackle missed yet, and it is not a fully accurate move. If I had the use of potions, Immortal P would win this, 
But this is a hardcore Nuzlocke. Okay, Immortal P. You've got one chance to dodge. And you didn't do it. Well, saw this one coming. Rage face? <laughs> Let's go hero mode. The rest of this fight is gonna be a breeze. Rage face has absolutely got this. But we're gonna see our first real loss, and we're gonna see proof of concept of this run. Here we go. Because Immortal P failed the duel, which means somebody takes a hit. As Onyx is just... Wow, Bide is real bad there. Bind would have been good. But down goes the Onyx. And Rage Face is level 13, but also might die right now. We received the Boulder Badge! Do -do 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 -do. And we're gonna get like 1188 money. Yep, money in from gym leaders is their love. Uh, their ace Pokemon's level times 100 minus that level. It's a really interesting formula. So it's actually times 99, but you know, still, we got a TM for Bide, and the Mortal P is not behind us right now. So, as you may recall. The, re the rules for this are remaining team members get put into essentially a dice roll. Rage Face and Burb will each have three faces of this die, the Game Boy player. Rage Face will go down if I land on frame, full screen size, or controller. Burb will go down if I land on screen filter, timer, or change game pack. Now, I'm aware that um, it seems as though I'd be able to choose this. But, I am looking away, I am trying to do this exactly honestly, and in three, two, one, stop. Burb. Well, Burb takes the hit, and Rage Face lives on. That's how it works. <laughs> Alright, our first Immortal P victim is Burb. Poor Burb. Missed sand attack, and then has his life drained by an immortal Pikachu. Just trying to, you know, get by. Da da da. Da da da. As we turn on our PC. I may have already switched the box to box 12 because I anticipated a loss. Burb? We knew you well. You could have been somebody. And now you're deposited. As Immortal P. Happily claims his first victim. I can't think of a better way to close out the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, as Immortal P has now taken one death and, therefore, the life of one team member. We will see you next time as we, well, go catch some more potential Pikachu victims. See you then. <laughs>